my name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is on selecting controllers for HSA. We start here as a brand new installation. Uh, we've clicked on the HSA shortcut as I've shown you in the uh, introduction video. The first thing we need to do is identify to HSA where our X lights folder actually resides. You do that by clicking on this and navigate to where your show is and I have one set up here in demo and you're going to pick the network network XML. That's what you're looking for. That's what we use to identify and that's the file that we work with with X lights. Once you've identified that you click open and HSA will now display all of the controllers by IP and the number of universes and channels associated with each of those controllers. Once you have your show displayed and all of the controllers identified, the next step is to identify which of these controllers is actually a Hinkle controller and we'll assume for this minute that IP number 50. I'm just going to talk about the last number of the IP address when I'm identifying the particular controller. So we'll identify IP address 50 as a Hinkle controller. We right click on it and it says pick the Hinkle type. Now over here Hinks Picks Pro that's my latest controller. Now it says 48 pixel ports. That is maximum utilization. Your purchase or your installation may only use 16 ports, 32 ports, or a complete 48. The 48 port identifier here is just to identify that the Pro has a maximum of 48. The Hinks Picks Pro 16 AC ports is another implementation using the Hinks Picks Pro. Then you've got an Easy Lights Pick 16, which is a 16 port uh, pixel controller. Easy Lights AC24, which is my uh, Easy Lights with 24 AC ports, and my original Hinks Pick 16 at the very bottom. We're going to pick a Pro board. And as if you notice, it turns green. Now, you can read down here, but one of the things that I'm able to do, depending on how much, how many universes and how much data that this controller is responsible for, I may actually be able to control one or two of these foreign controllers. Now, for our discussion, I'm using the word foreign controller to describe a controller from a different manufacturer. And what we'll do is, as demonstration purposes, we will add two foreign controllers to our SD card. So the SD card will actually contain the audio and lighting data for three controllers. One that the Hinks Picks Pro will utilize itself. The other two, the Hinks Picks Pro will transmit over an Ethernet network to the two foreign controllers where they'll process E131 data. Now, the way that selection goes is based on the number of universes consumed within the Hinks Picks Pro under this example and the other controllers. Let's say that we want to add controller 58 as a slave. We're going to right click and now we're going to say slave management. We're going to say select this non-Hinkle controller as a slave and it'll turn purple to identify that it's been selected. The next thing we need to do is tell HSA which Hinkle controller we want to associate that with. So we're going to come back up on the 50, we're going to right click, go back down to slave management, 
and say select this Hinkle controller to manage that previously selected slave. And in doing so, we now have the slave associated with that Hinkle controller and the purple identifies that this controller is currently under use. Let's pick up 17 and we'll do the same thing for 17. So we're going to come along, we're going to select it, then we're going to come up, and if you notice here, Slave Universe says 33. So it allows me to pick any foreign controller that has 33 or less universes to be a controller. So if this particular controller consumed 50 universes, I would not be able to select it. So that is what this column tells you. This column will identify the number of universes available for slaves for this controller. We're, this controller only uses 16, less than 33. We are fine. So we're going to come up and we're going to associate it. Now, this controller is maxed out as far as what it can support. If you come up to the file up here, you get a save configuration. I'm going to suggest that as you build your HSA control information, you occasionally go up and you save it. Just in case I got a bug and the program crashes, you're not going to lose all of your work. To let you know, when you exit by clicking on the X up here, it will t uh, HSA is smart enough to know if you've made any changes, and if you've made changes, it'll save it automatically for you. Before we go further, just to let you know, up here in File, there is also Send an Email to Joe, or it'll ask you what your current H HSA version is. So, this is concluding all of the HSA processes or the selections that we can take place on show controller. There'll be more videos on each of these subtitles or each of those tabs uh, as we go on. That concludes this training video on how to set up and identify controllers to work in standalone mode with an SD card by using HSA.